Fine-tuning large language models is a powerful way to tailor AI to your specific needs. While it's not always the right choice, fine-tuning a model can help you in many cases, including when you have a specific data set with prompts and the exact outputs you need, need the model to consistently follow a format, or have domain or time-specific data that needs to be incorporated. In this video, we'll walk you through how to fine-tune an OpenAI model, leveraging Label Studio to ensure data set quality and model performance. Let's get started. First, you'll need to download our examples repository if you haven't already done so. This will give you access to our notebooks. I've already done that, and I've gone ahead and opened the Jupyter Notebook in my local Jupyter instance. I've also gone ahead and installed all the dependencies that we'll need. From here, we can walk through what the code does. In this example, we'll be using Wikipedia data to fine tune our model. This is a good example because we have a lot of data after the date that the model's knowledge base comes from. So we'll be able to really prove that fine tuning works. First, we're gonna go ahead and set our list of topics. Here we're using hurricanes that happened in the 2024 hurricane season. And then we'll use this function to go ahead and pull the Wikipedia revisions. Uh, these are the updates to Wikipedia after a certain date for the given article and collect the data in a list of dictionaries. All right, now that we've generated all of our data, we can do some metrics like printing out the number of examples we have in our data set. Here we have about 10,000, uh, as well as printing out the data itself so we can understand better what it looks like. The next step is to generate question and answer pairs that we can use to actually fine tune our model. We'll go ahead and use this boilerplate code to go ahead and create some QA pairs that we can use to fine tune our data. First, we'll go ahead and run this function. We'll skip this test section, and then we'll go ahead and we'll generate all of our content that we need based on the data that we collected. Great, we've now generated our whole question and answer data set. While we could review it here in Jupyter Notebook by printing out some of these questions, we're actually better better off labeling them in Label Studio so that we can make sure they're of high quality. Here, we'll go ahead and we'll format our list for Label Studio, and then we'll actually do it on our data and save it as a JSON. Next, we'll set up our Label Studio project, and then we'll go ahead and import all of the tasks to our project. Now, in my local Label Studio instance, you can see that I have this new project, Hurricane Data Project, with all of the data that we just uploaded. If I click into a sample here, I can see that our model, V1, has gone ahead and given us a completion. In this case, it looks like it's okay. In reality, you'd want to go through and hand label these samples to make sure that they're really doing what you think you're doing, but for the sake of this demonstration, we'll call it good enough. Let's go back to our Jupyter Notebook. We'll use this code to go ahead and pull the data that we annotated. Since we didn't actually annotate anything in this example, I went ahead and changed this filter view to true, but you're going to want to leave it false, which is the way that it is in the demo data anyway. So we'll go ahead and run this code, and that should help us pull the data that we've pulled from Label Studio. Here, you can see that we've downloaded all 23 examples. We'll save these to a JSON. The next step is to create our fine-tuning data set from our annotated set. Here, we'll just convert our data from Label Studio format into OpenAI format. After that's completed, we'll do some analysis on our data set and run some cost estimates so that we can have a better idea of what we're doing when we actually go ahead and run our data through the OpenAI model. In this case, we have 23 examples, and here's the first example. We'll check for any errors in the data, in the data set. And then we'll go ahead and we'll calculate some simple estimations of how much this might cost us. You can see here that it'll take us um, about three messages per example. We'll have, you know, about 70 tokens per example. Um, and nothing will be over the limit, which is great. And finally, we can do some math about how long this is going to, how much this is going to cost us. We're finally ready to upload all of our data to OpenAI so that we can fine tune. I already ran the script, which uploads the file itself. And I took the file ID here from ID and imported it into the training file variable in the next step. Now we can go ahead and create a fine tuning job based on that script. And we can check the status of it using the next line. When you go to check the status of your job, make sure that you take this ID field and update the ID field below. Let's see if my model's moved on at all. Hmm, seems like it hasn't kept training yet. We'll check back later. If we check back in on our model, we'll see that it's been done running. We can tell because we now have a model, FT, everything else. Um, FT stands for fine-tuned. We're going to take this name of the model here and paste it in the model field in our next section. This is where we're going to make sure that the model actually fine-tuned. So here you can see that we're going to ask it, what's the most recent hurricane to hit the US in 2024? And we ask it with the newest model, 
we get Hurricane Adalia, which is true. Um, and now we can tell that our model's been properly fine-tuned. And that's it. Now you can say that you fine-tuned an OpenAI model using Label Studio. Happy labeling!